bicycles and or people. If I want to just look at bicycles only, or if I want to look at a person in a red shirt with blue pants, I can find them. Uh, <laughs> I can also choose what area I want them to, what I what I want to find, uh, where I want to find them. I can also do a direction, right? So I only want to people see people going in an east direction or a vehicle. Um, and then size and duration, I only want to see things that are maybe smaller than X, Y, Z, right? Smaller than a person, if you will. So from here, uh, we can just Crazy. go ahead and search. Question so far? Nope. I, I was happy with just, you know, putting up with our system, just putting little lines when there's motion so I can go to them. And oh, no. We're gonna, no, the new stuff's going to change your life. Um, if you're using Access Object Analytics, you're going to get a lot of proactivity to it so as well. So like a lot of this stuff, things that I'm doing here, you'll be able to essentially do as well. Um, but as you can see, I just sifted through video. I just called out looking for bicycles, also people in red shirts. So you can see all the, the information that's coming through it, right? From here, I can look at the uh, video and say, like, this is something that I want to export. Right. Or look into a little bit more. I can... If you, I can view it, right? And then I can just go into the recorded video of it. And from here, I can also export that data. What were you saying, Raymond? I was saying that guy's pretty far away from the camera to be detected with the, the red shirt. That's not, oh, uh, yeah. That's yeah. not something right. that, that's typical yeah. among, you know, a lot of uh, cameras with built-in analytics. It, it usually requires like a server-grade analytics to be able to see that far away. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, Bray, I was actually looking at our system yesterday doing a demo at our experience center, and I noticed, like, exactly what you're saying. Our, our, we have a camera that's kind of looking out the courtyard of our campus, and the, the, the people that it's tracking in the foreground is actually a lot smaller than you and I have discussed. You know how we always talk about, like, okay, where is it limited? Where is the farthest? I mean, it's exceeding where you and I had last talked, so... Uh, a lot of the firmware updates are, are are due to that, right? They're continuously making that also evolve. So it's getting better and better. Um, so how I'm many, sorry, how many frames per second is that that you're Me? recording out there? I think I'm running at like 30 frames. Probably okay. a no-no. Why but, is that a no-no? Oh, I don't know. For, for me, because so I don't suck up all the bandwidth? Yeah, it's, you know, yeah, no, it's, it's fine if you have a... Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Fiber running system or your, your network is legit. But most of us at home, you know, if we use it, I mean, if you're, unless you're really working from home, you always want to have that one gig type of bandwidth. But most of us are probably what, 300, 400 meg, depending mm -hmm. on the price. But so, yeah, so that's, that's free. That's baked into, well, that's actually in your Access Camera Station 5 currently. Right. Um, but what you, what you don't also have in there within that platform is actually going to be um, like search intervals or, or visual similarities, essentially. It's not going to be as good doing it on this piece here. But if I find someone, I should be able to so, search through the last time these people have been in front of this camera. So it's not so necessarily you, like face track, but it, it's kind of like human track, you know? Is there like a, a thing where you can do an area and be like, when did this vehicle leave? Or when did this vehicle arrive? Type yeah. Of? Yeah, that's that's available in your original smart search. Right. I haven't used it at all yet. So it's just okay. Kidding. So yeah, this smart search is, is essentially that, right? I want to search every time something happened within this area or this person or vehicle or this bag was dropped off. I want to see all the data for that and just sift through it instead of being in such, you know, amount of motion activity, you can dive and filter through all that information. So that's always Perfect. been available from that perspective. Right? Can't wait so, to play with it. Uh, say it again? So I can't wait to play with it. Yep. And then uh, a couple of other things too to note is uh, we are going to be implementing a large learning uh, language model within camera station as well. So instead of looking at things from a, a vehicle type perspective, You'll be able to free text. I'm looking. F I need to find search all the FedEx trucks, right? Uh, I'm looking for a blue Tesla uh, guy with a goatee, right? We can be more granular with how we search using that large uh, language, so we won't have great. to just be stuck to the color palettes of things. We can actually now just tell it what we want to search. Now there's going to be obviously things excluded. We're not going to be profiling people 
or not going to have any of those kind of annotations. You're not going to be able to swear, obviously, within it. But reality is, is a lot of the functionality, things that you want to do and search for, they'll all be available within that platform. And that's, again, free update for you. So going too far. Um, <clears throat> what did I, I had a question and I just lost it. Uh, oh, the, uh, the eye in the sky. Uh, so you got this 360 and then you got the PTZ. So when it sees motion on the 360 cameras, it zooms over and, and zoom. Is that something I have to configure or is it just like come out of the box that way? Or what's, what's the deal with that? You're going to have to configure it. You're going to want to automate that stuff. Okay. So yeah. explain to me that, that, uh, that application again, and I'll see if I can. It's the, it's the 6100 with the 6318. So are you, uh, I'm assuming that's just autopilot, right, Danny? He's probably just wanting an autopilot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yes, yes. That's that's like available, autopilot. but you, you do have to calibrate that, though. You do have to say, okay. like, this is the area, this is the visual that I want when said thing is triggering that specific sensor. Okay. Right. Um, now, it's important to note that that sensor can also, or the PTZ can talk to other sensors around, too. So if you if you place a PTZ, maybe look at other locations that have a camera around it and know that you can trigger, by coming into your recording or your action rules, you can trigger your device event to then put right. that, let's say, PTZ into a preset specifically, right? So when this is happening, I want this camera to go into a preset. Uh, okay. So to give you two eyes instead of one, depending on where you're at, right? And so just, just to kind of briefly go through this, this is the keys to your automation, right? This allows you to do all of the, when this happens, I want this thing to secondarily happen, right? So when I get an analytic trigger in, in after hours, I want a speaker to say you are trespassing, right, in basic ways. So these are all different triggers that you can get. Uh, everything from like motion detection to pressing a panic button or a door contact getting uh, messed with. Uh, you can also do, uh, you can receive other things like HTTPS from other platforms and then use actions based on that as well. So there's a number of different things that you can do here. You can also create soft buttons or virtual triggers. So like, hey, I'm going to go to my phone, press a button, and then that's going to tell 13 speakers to say you are trespassing, right? Or whatever you right. want to do that. Um, right. Secondarily, you have triggers or you have actions, right? So from there, it's, I want to record in a different palette, right? So when I write an action rule, I want that color to be different, so I'm not just looking at red motion the entire time. I want this to be a different color tone, so I can just sift through that if I need to go through the timeline. Uh, raising alarm is for guards, and you can do everything here from like popping up to sending notifications to other devices, like our like our uh, speaker systems. Doing mobile app notifications that are more specific, right? Human on the east side of the property as opposed to motion on 26 or on camera 26. And then you can create all these automations and have rules to turn them on and off, right? So I built this entire automation system, but I've got like a PTA meeting coming. I want to turn these all off so it's not screaming, uh, you are trespassing, right? Or if I'm having a party at nighttime, I don't want this thing to fire off all the time. I'm going to obviously have that uh, turned off, right? And I can engage on it, engage it again. So it's an alarm on and alarm off button. And then access control, right? If someone, uh, if, if a door is left open for too long, I want a notification, or if I press this panic button, I want to put my entire system into lockdown, right? So there's a number of different So you, you, you press a panic button. Mm -hmm. uh, that, I mean, cameras are just pretty much going to be everywhere anyway. Mm -hmm. How does that get into, I mean, there's, there's no like alarm inputs or anything on this guy. So camera dependent, or we have things like uh, input outputs that are network right so we could do either a network io uh which is you know you just take your panic button pair wires into your network io that's cat6 back to your network and we can now turn that into a network automation right we can use that if you have a camera that has an input which a lot of our p32s or whatever camera you might be using may have that you could run mm -hmm. a panic button essentially to the camera camera's already added in the software anyway so now we can just use that panic button when panic button is pressed in that camera i want a notification to be sent or put it in a lockdown or whatever you want to do thereafter as an action. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm thinking like the door position sensor, um, whatever cameras on that door, just run a wire from the camera to that DPS. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you want, yeah. If you have a door contact at a door, like you said, and somebody opens it, that contact breaks, you can have it, record instantly right then and there 
So I'm like, hey, somebody just walked well, to this door and sent it. It's going to be recording room. anyway, but I would. Um, you could set it up like a bookmark per like, se. Like so, set a green line, you know, and green yeah. lines mean the door was opened or. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good to know. Awesome. So and, and yeah, you'd be able to filter those events through them too by using your action rule filter, right? <clears throat> so that would just go and only take me to the events that have an action rule specifically to them. So it's a nice nice way to sift through video super fast instead of just you know struggling to get through it. Um, important yes. to note, just lastly, on the software, you have the ability to manage your cameras, obviously, as you know today, access control, so doors and readers, intercoms, right? So I push a button, I make a phone, I make a phone call to maybe a house phone or even my cell phone, um, and then unlock a door, right? Same, similar to the ring, except we're going to unlock doors for that. Um, and then speakers, right? So you can do like a home audio system if you wanted to, or realistically just one or two speakers and you can remotely now defend your property, right? So instead of helplessly watching on a camera, I can actually speak to that situation or fire off different MP3 files, so like alarm sounds that you rip from YouTube, or like if you want to customize messaging to say, hey, get off the property or what have you, you can create those automations um, and again, create buttons for that stuff too, and have those speak to either your speakers or even visual deterrents like our strobe. So there's a lot of proactive solutions that you could put together with this software. It's not just a camera platform, it's a lot more. It's really just the conduit to a lot of different things that you want to do. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. Nothing comes to mind. Is that again? Nothing comes to mind that we, I would use that for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like the door being left open and have it spout out a, hey, were you raised in a barn? Close the freaking door or something. Yeah. That, yeah, we do that at schools, believe it or not. <laughs> what about the no, construction just, site? Is, it, keep, is the construction site going to be 24-7? Or is it going to be closed What's at that? night? Is the construction site going to be 24-7 or will it be closed at night? The construction site is uh, probably closed, closed at night until they get the uh, uh, the walls up and some lighting in and stuff, and then they'll probably be working around the clock. So you can have, for example, the siren strobe basically have a various, you well, know. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. We'll, we'll see. see. Well, well, here's the thing that we're, yeah, we're, we're using these things in similar fashion as like you've seen with those trailers in like the Lowe's parking lot that have the little blue blinking lights. Sticking these on commercial properties after hours, we want this to flip into red and blue, red three times, blue three times and over and over, or we can just have it interact. So when someone's in front of it, um, I want to have that go off, right? And not audibly, it just can be a visual thing, um, or it could be an audible thing if they're there for too long. And then uh, you, you kind of have now a, a smarter way to kind of have the same thing that those guys are doing in those parking lots. A lot of a lot of crime reduction in those parking lots because those trailers are there. And really, the first sign of that is obviously looking at that and seeing the visual. So visual is really helpful, uh, not only from like deterring people, right, but also when you're in a dark area and that light goes on, you're going to look at that light and guess who's next to it? Probably an access camera, right? So at that point, now I have a facial shot, clean, clear so on and so forth. But you could also just have this automated so after hours it goes on and people just, okay, well, I would rather go to the one without the blinking police lights and go after that, right? These aren't also the cheesy little ones that come on the cameras. These are very bright. So they kind of have a little bit more authority to them. So yeah. something to consider. But with that, um, I'm good here. Do you, is there anything else, Danny, you think I should show off? Now, I just wanted to kind of uh, just to see the visual of the interface. I'm sure when gotcha. he doubles yeah. with it, he's going to be like, it's easy. Yeah. Upgrade it now, and then uh, Ray's going to send me another camera. Um, actually, um, I mean, you can show him really yeah, I'll quick. Talk, uh, I'll talk with you offline, Ray, but we're going to probably get a couple cameras. I mean, we're buying a shit ton of them anyway, so let's just. I'll say just show them, chat how easy it is just to add cameras, because that's probably the easiest thing on the whole platform. An area you can do, for example, like if you have uh, vehicles that are parked in in uh, like a no parking zone, for example, you can say, all right, I, if the if the vehicle has been there for more than like three minutes, then I want an alert to be sent. Or you can say, you know, I basically want the siren strobe to go 
to like yellow mode and then five minutes is like you know red mode and then you start sounding the alarm or, or however you mm -hmm. want to do it uh, but the AOA the object analytics basically you know not only you know counts the number of people or vehicles but it also has you know the time uh, depending on the camera the time spent in the area so if they're loitering or if the vehicle is you know has like an overtime alert then you can send an alarm that way Yep, yep. And, and AOA, or what he's talking about, is an application that lives on all of our cameras. It's free for you, right? So it's it's up to you to obviously automate this. And you can see some of the things that I'm doing with just my simple one. But I'm doing loitering, obviously, with the neighbors and their dogs specifically. Uh, people breaching lawn, right? So this is all done in the same camera. Uh, I'm actually doing people counting. So anyone going west is what I'm counting. And then I had some automations that I had for Halloween, right? So you can do a number of different things with these. You can do object in area. So anybody that's in this area, I want a notification on or line specific, right? Got to cross one or two or several lines for me to get a notification. Time in area is what uh, Ray's speaking about, right? So that's anybody in this specific area that's there for longer than let's say 15 seconds, right? I, I want that to be a notification. It's pretty simple to set up. Just add 15 seconds and then, you know, tailor this to the zone that you want it to be in. So maybe I don't want it to be all that and then click finish and that's that's done, right? It's not a complicated process, uh, like maybe others right. make it to, to, to run something uh, intelligent like that, so. Perfect. So just wanted to give you just a quick overview on that. And Danny, you said something else, how to add cameras, right? So adding cameras, pretty simple, just go to the add device. And if they're here, they'll populate and you'll just click, uh, you'll enter the username and password or the password specifically, and then just click add and it'll yep. be in your system, either in cameras or it'll come in as other devices like this one. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, yeah I, I added this uh, 